you have not yet connected with me on telegram then do find me by abhi cat and connect with me there so that i can help you solve your doubts we can resolve any issues that you have you can follow you can get updates for new classes and so on also you can follow me on an academy find me by my name that's abhilasha swarup a b h i l a s h a s w a r u p for uh, connecting with me let's get started here's our reading comprehension for cat 2020 very lovely passage on travel writing so uh, let's get started mode of transportation affects the travel experience and thus can produce new types of travel writing and perhaps new even new identities modes of transportation determine the types and duration of social encounters affect the organization and passage of space and time and also affect perception and knowledge how and what the traveler comes to know and write about the completion of the first us transcontinental highway during the 1920s for example inaugurated a new genre of travel literature about the united states the automotive or road narrative such narratives highlight the experiences of mostly male protagonists discovering themselves on their journeys emphasizing the independence of road travel and the value of rural folk traditions so in this part of the passage we start out by talking about how uh, the mode of transportation impacts the travel and also impacts the new uh, brings about new types of travel writing also maybe a new identity as a person so here is the starting point of the passage which says hey uh, the travel experience can be impacted by how you are traveling and then can give you different types of travel writing and also maybe new identities and then he gives you an example that in the 1920s when the us transcontinental highway was built from one end of the us to the other end so you got a new type of travel literature which was the road narrative so here were men who were discovering them on these long journeys uh, where which they took on the road you know and this was talking about the independence of road travel how independent it is and how the rural folk tradition or the village traditions are you know very valuable and they are being kept alive travel writings relationship to empire building as a type of colonialist discourse so Uh, travel writing is also related to empire building so people who went out to you know uh, the colo uh, the colonies from the uh, from england and from other such countries so they also did a lot of travel writing so that has drawn the most attention from academicians so academicians have really studied that a lot close connections have been observed between european and american political economic and administrative goals for the colonies and their manifestations in the cultural practice of writing travel books so that it so this that travel writing and how the goals of the uh, these colonies were being um, put forward are very closely connected in these books travel writers descriptions of foreign places have been analyzed as attempts to validate promote or change the ideologies and practices of colonial or imperial domination and expansion so the travel writers they would describe these foreign uh, places and they would try to validate the idea of colonization or imperial domination that it was right to dominate these people the colonies because uh, civilization was being brought to them because uh, technology industrialization was being brought to them because railways were being brought to them so the travel writers were in essence mouthpieces of the um the the imperialist and those who wanted to practice expansionist ideas mary louise pratt's study of the genres and conventions of 18th and 19th century exploration narratives about south america and africa example the monarch of all i survey trope offered ways of thinking about travel writing as embedded within relations of power between the metropole and periphery as did edward said's theories of representation and cultural imperialism 
So here are two very interesting writers. There is Mary Louise Pratt and also Edward Said. And both of them talk about this uh, very interesting concept where the British or the, the uh, European person is the king of everything that he is surveying. And what is the relationship between the metropole or the, the dominating power or the colonizing power and the periphery that is the countries that are on the sidelines or that are being controlled. Particularly, Said's book, Orientalism, helps scholars understand ways in which the representations of people, specifically, so he's saying that more specifically, Said's book, which is called Orientalism, this one helps scholars understand ways in which representations of people in travel text were intimately bound up with notions of self. So, so Said's book would help us or others understand how these travel writings were very closely associated with a person, with the traveler or the writer's notion of himself. In this case, that the Occident defined itself through essentialist, ethnocentric and racist representations of the Orient. So, in Saeed's book, he essentially says that the, the people who were writing these travel texts, they thought of themselves as essential. They thought that they were the heart of or they were the base of, you know, their, everything that was happening. And they were also doing this very racist representation of the Orient. So, this idea that the person from the Occident, the Occident is the West, the Orient is the East or the countries that were being colonized. So, the Occidental traveler thought that he was important and how he viewed the world or how he felt that the, the, the colonizing powers were helping the world were very, very uh, true and that is what he has brought about in his book. Said's work became a model for demonstrating cultural forms of imperialism in travel text. So, Said's work, how, what Said has written in his book, it was, it became a model for showing that imperialist powers were also spreading culture and were trying to spread this cultural form of imperialism. So, the brown sahab, you know, you remember the concept of the brown sahab, the Indian man who follows the British culture, the British style and becomes in essential, uh, in a sense, a uh, an Indian version of the British man. So, that was the cultural form of imperialism that happened and this is shown in the travel text showing how the political, economic or administrative fact of dominance relies on legitimating discourses such as those articulated through travel writing. So, Said's book also showed how the political, economic or administrative fact of dominance how the powers that be, how they are, you know, how they are running the country, the economy or how they are administering the country. All that relied on making things appear true. So, legitimating discourses. So, those discourses, those narratives that were being put out by travel writing, those were tried to be, you know, made true. Now, the feminist geographer's studies of travel writing challenge the masculinist history of geography by questioning who and what are relevant subjects of geographic study and indeed what counts as geographic knowledge itself. So, here is the next part. So, one was that the idea that so, passage is divided. Now, you see, this is the third part. The first spoke about the American travel journey literature where you had these men who were finding themselves. Then the second type of travel literature is the, the, the European man who is a colonizing power and he wants to legitimize his narrative that he is helping these poor uh, ox, uh, Orientals or these poor Africans or these poor South Americans by bringing to them, uh, you know, uh, their administration. 
Now the third part of this passage talks about how these feminists, these women geographers, they challenge the masculine or the men geographers and how they talk about these stories. So the feminist geographer's studies of travel writing challenge the masculinist history of geography by questioning who and what are the relevant subjects of geographic study. So they ask, is this the relevant subject of geographic study? And indeed, what counts as geographic knowledge itself? So, so the feminist geographers ask, is this really what you call geography? Such questions are worked through ideological constructs that posit men as explorers and women as travelers. Or conversely, men as travelers and women as, tried, uh, as tied to the home. So these are, uh, there are ideological stories or constructs where men are the explorers and women just go along with them as travelers. Or sometimes the men are travelers and women are staying at home. So the geography was, if you understand it, how it was built, men went out and they explored places and then they came back and they told these those things to women. So travel writing, when it was done by women, it kind of shattered these notions that the man or the masculinist history of geography or, or was, was a certain way. Studies of Victorian women who were professional travel writers, so in the 1800s and all, women who were professional travel writers, tourists, wives of colonial administrators, and other mostly elite women. Obviously, it was the it were the elite women who were traveling. The poor would not get to travel. They were fighting their daily, you know, bread and butter. So the mostly elite women who wrote narratives about their experiences abroad during the 19th century have been particularly revealing. So these women, whatever they have written, whatever experiences they had, they have written about those experiences, and those experiences have been particularly revealing. From a liberal feminist perspective, travel presented one means towards female liberation for middle and upper class Victorian women. So it was very liber it was liberating. The female would, would find her liberation uh, when she traveled. Many studies from the 1970s onward demonstrated the ways in women's in which women's gendered identities were negotiated differently at home than they were away, thereby showing women's self-development through travel. So when women traveled, obviously they could not be that British rose who stayed at home and just the slightest amount of sun would, you know, make her wilt. So their gendered identities were different when they were traveling. The more recent post-cultural turn in studies of Victorian travel writing has focused attention on women's diverse and fragmented identities as they narrated their travel experiences, emphasizing the women's sense of themselves as women in new locations. But only as they work through their ties to nation, class, whiteness, and colonial and imperial power structures. So the, this most recent post-cultural studies uh, you know, uh, where we are studying Victorian travel writing is focusing attention on women's diverse and fragmented identity. They had many identities. They are narrating their travel experiences and they are identifying, they are trying to find themselves. And maybe as women in new location, they are working through their connection to their nation, how they are a British woman or a Sp Spanish woman, or a French woman, or a Dutch woman who's traveling, her class identity, her whiteness, and colonial and imperial power structure. So it is this, this female travel writing that brought about a lot of development for the women also. So this passage is very interesting, has three parts very clearly. The American travel literature, one, two, the, the cultural power literature, the uh, colonizing power literature, and three, the feminist uh, power literature. So here are your three types of literature that you have. Okay, I hope you got this. Well, let's take a look at our questions. This is question number one. From the passage, we can infer that feminist scholars' understanding of the experience of women travelers, Victorian women travelers, is influenced by all of the following except the scholars what? 
So now first let's understand this question. So the question is saying that we can understand that the feminist scholars understanding of the experience of the Victorian women traveler is impacted by something. So what all is it being impacted by? We have to find that and then whatever is left will be the correct answer. Please understand any question that is in except. Please mark whatever can be inferred and what cannot be inferred will then be your correct answer. Okay, I hope you got that. So let's take a look at this question and let's try and find our answer. So question option number one says, so first question is understand. कि ये जो फेमिनिस स्कॉलर्स हैं वो विमेन ट्रैवलर्स को अंडरस्टैंड कर रहे हैं तो वो विमेन ट्रैवलर के एक्सपीरियंसेस को अंडरस्टैंड कर रहे हैं कैसे कैसे तो वो जो फेमिनिस स्कॉलर्स हैं उनकी अंडरस्टैंडिंग इनमें से किससे किससे इन्फ्लुएंस हो रही है तो देखते हैं so let us take a look the first one says awareness of the ways in which identity is formed so the women traveler the female traveler is trying to become become aware in which identity is being formed how is the identity of the female traveler being formed the perspective that they bring to their research so the female traveler the women traveler is bringing her own unique female perspective so is that something that helps the scholars understanding those who are doing the post-cultural studies? Is it the knowledge of class tensions in Victorian society that helps the feminist scholar understand the, the Victorian women travelers? Or is it the awareness of gender issues in Victorian society? Now, if you, have read, if you have looked at the last part of the passage, the last part of the passage does talk about each one of these. Okay, so if we quickly take a look, look at this last portion. So the last portion does talk about the liberal feminist perspective. So the travel allowed you uh, female liberation. These women were free to go. They would travel and they would write. Then the gendered identities were negotiated differently. So at home, they were ladies who would not step out. While when they were traveling, they would do many things differently. So there was self-development. And then it also talked about women were finding out their own sense of themselves, but they are working through their ties to nation, class, whiteness, and so on. So now if you look at this question, apparently option one is something that can be inferred. Option two is also something that can be inferred. Option 3 is also something that can be inferred. Option 4 which talks about the knowledge of class tensions in the Victorian society is something that we cannot infer from any place in the passage. And therefore, 3 cannot be the correct answer. Or oh, As in 3 is the one that is not to be inferred and therefore that's going to be the accept answer or the correct answer. Let's take a look at our answer and check if I've got it right. Yes, see, knowledge of class tensions in the Victorian society. So we have spoken about gendered identities. We have spoken about female liberation. We've spoken about women's sense of themselves as women in new locations as they're working through their ties to nation, class, and whiteness, and its other things. I hope you were able to understand this question. Question number two, from passage, we can infer that travel writing is most similar to so now if you have read this passage, we spoke about three things. We spoke about the American travel literature and we said that the American traveler, he writes about his own experience. Okay. We spoke about the feminist traveler who again spoke about her own experience. And we spoke about the colonial traveler who also was writing about his own experience. So everybody who was doing travel writing was more or less doing, uh, talking about his own experience. And therefore, can it be political journalism that travel writing is most similar to? No. Can it be historical fiction? Well, it's not fiction. We are very sure of that. So eliminate. 
is it more similar to feminist writing well there are so many types of travel writing that feminist writing would be too limiting for this so i feel that the best answer should be autobiographical writing that we are talking about let's check if our answer is right well yes it is okay wonderful so here we are take a look particularly said's book orientalism helps scholars understand ways in which representations of people in travel texts were intimately bound up with notions of self so here you are the notion of the self autobiography all right let's look at the third question from the passage it can be inferred that the scholars argue that victorian women experienced self development through their travels why so why did the victorian women experience self development was it because their identity was redefined when they were away from home was it because they were from progressive middle and upper classes of society was it because they were on a quest to discover their own diverse identities or was it because they developed a feminist perspective of the world now very clearly this was mentioned uh, in the passage very very beautifully that their identities their gendered identities were different when they were at home and were different when they were away so therefore guys the correct answer here should probably be one let us take a moment and check if this is correct Well yes the correct answer is that their identity was redefined when they were away from home and here is the part of the passage which does tell us that many studies from the 1970s onward demonstrated the ways in which women's gendered identities were negotiated differently at home than when they were away so here it is your correct answer I hope you have been able to follow this passage and that you have been able to uh, pick up the correct answers. There are several other questions in this reading comprehension so if you wish you can follow the video and take a look at the rest of the questions also. Uh, uh, you can look up the past year papers and follow the rest of the uh, questions also. All right guys for my special classes 10 15 practice rush hour which is a daily section test for you to solve and enjoy. Thank you so much for joining in. Remember to hit like, share, subscribe and the bell icon. Lots of fun. And also remember the to use my referral code abhikat live to get your 10% off on your next an academy subscription. Thank you so much. Have a nice day and I will see you on the other side. Adios my amigos.